What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I love mythical creatures, I always believe they existed in some capacity even though I've never actually seen any, but I feel like the child inside you always just wants to believe mermaids are real, dragons are real, minotaurs and griffins are real, and that our world isn't just as boring as to have us in it, and apparently it's not. Before I get into it, I just wanted to shout out one of our subs Kimberly for buying some of our merch, you can see here in this picture she's wearing a black sweatshirt, you look cute, you're doing great sweetie, I love it. But yeah, apparently our world is actually not as boring as just having us in it. These are the top 10 scary mythical creatures that were found in real life. Starting us off with number 10 is the Cyclops Polyphemus. Now hear me out people, just hear me out. This is real, it is real. Now in Greek mythology, Polyphemus was a Cyclops son of Poseidon and Tusa and he's also in Homer's Odyssey. In the ancient Greek times, fossils were abundant but the people also didn't have the knowledge or know how to actually understand what they were looking at. They told stories to each other of savage giants because they found huge bones in the ground, but really those bones weren't from giants. Sicily was a hotbed for finding fossilized remains of giant prehistoric elephants and mammoths, but since the people didn't know what they were, they attributed them to giant humans and, well, cyclopses. Cyclops? Cyclopsi? I don't know what the plural is. The skeleton or even the skulls of any mammoth or mastodon do have all the characteristics of a mythical cyclops. Now their navel cavities were often damaged and so they looked like a massive centralized hole in the skull which the Greeks easily mistook for a cyclops because I mean what else would be in the hole other than an eyeball. So for many ancient Greeks the fictional fear of meeting a cyclops became very real when they discovered these fossils and realized wait they actually are real and they do walk among us. When really false alarm, they're just mammoths you guys, don't you worry, just woolly mammoths, we all love a bit of woolly mammoths. I started really liking mammoths after watching Ice Age. Come on, everyone loves Ice Age. Coming in at number nine is the African unicorn, aka the Okapi. Now, every time I look at this animal, I legit think it's just a case of Photoshop. Like, I always fail to believe this is a natural animal. Looks wise, the Okapi is a mix of a zebra, a deer, a donkey, and an antelope, but genetically, it's closest to a giraffe, which is already like six animals in one. Now, their legs and neck are striped like a zebra, their ears and face resemble a deer, but their body shape looks donkeyish. Now they are extremely rare and can only be found in the Ituri forest in central Africa. Now if we go back in time the indigenous people of that area were aware of the Okapi's existence but that was through indirect means like hoof prints and poop not by actually seeing one. When Europeans came to Africa they all believed the Okapi was a myth told by the indigenous people. They even called it the African unicorn because they just failed to believe it and because the Okapi just hid from them so damn easily. It retained its mythical status to the Europeans until 1901 when Sir Harry Johnston, a zoologist, actually got his hands on an Okapi skeleton and its skin and sent it back to Britain and he was like, take a look at that people. At number 8 we have the Basilisk. Yes, that was me speaking parcel tongue just now, and you don't have to worry about what I said. You know, some things are just private, just between me and it. You know how it is. Throughout history, there's never been a shortage of stories or sightings of the infamous basilisk. Warsaw, 1587, a five year old girl vanished, and her mum and maid turned the town upside down looking for her. They ended up finding her stiff and still in the underground cellar of a house that had been abandoned for 30 odd years. The maid made her way down the stairs, but before she could reach the bottom, one, she froze petrified. Years and years later, the story was told that the girl and maid never moved again because they stared into the eyes of the basilisk, the one beast on earth that could kill with just one look. Now, even before the Europeans, the Romans believed in them too. They thought basilisk lived abundantly in Cyrene, which is present day Libya. Pliny the Elder wrote that no man on earth could ever kill the beast since it left a trail of poison wherever it went, and if someone even tried stabbing it, the poison would drip onto his own weapon and end his life. And to be honest, the basilisk was a real animal, or most likely the exaggerated version of one. Now, Libya does have a lot of cobras that spit out poison, so it's quite likely that stories of their poisonous spit, which is exaggerated and in a Chinese whisper sort of fashion, just turn into these snakes that could kill just by looking at you. There's always an element of truth in rumor, you guys. That's what I believe. Otherwise, there wouldn't be rumors. Filling on a seventh slot are mermaids. Now, we all know a mermaid 
mermaids are, they're half female, half fish creatures that are present in pretty much every country's folklore. People all over the world reported sightings of these creatures coming out of the sea. Even Christopher Columbus in 1493 wrote that he saw three mermaids which rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be, for their faces had some masculine traits. First of all, rude. Secondly, I love how people back then believed more in magic and folklore and legend than people do now. Like we've just declined as a species for sure. People thought they were real and I mean they are. But it was never mermaids people were seeing, they were manatees. So I'm pretty sure Columbus needed glasses or Jesus because masculine traits? They didn't even look human, what is man saying? The sightings he and others saw were most likely manatees performing tail stands which lets them rise vertically out of the water. Their joy Jointed forelimbs let them actually hold things and bring food to their mouths and swim, so I feel like from very far away it became easy for travellers to mistake that as a human eating or treading water, and thus mermaids were born. Now, at number six are the giant savage man beasts. Now, isn't that just man in general? <laughs> I said what I said. Now, back in the 16th century, people were being told stories of gigantic hairy man beasts with horrible tempers living in the wilds all over the world. And since you had no internet at the time, you couldn't exactly debunk the story even if you wanted to. Now, the explorer Andrew Battelle told people at home that monsters used to visit his campsite after all the humans had left. Which I don't even know how he knew if he wasn't there himself, but okay, Andrew. Well, it turns out these savage hairy man beasts weren't myth or legend, they were real and they were gorillas. You see, gorillas were obscure up until 1847 when naturalist Thomas Savage finally obtained some gorilla bones in Liberia and this new species was found. I know it's Thomas Savage, but because of the clone I really wanted to say Thomas Savage. <laughs> It is not. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 is Bigfoot. Good old Bigfoot, now I feel like it's tradition by now for it to make an appearance at least once or twice a month on the channel. Like come on guys, it's Bigfoot. We need him. Very popular in North American folklore, this creature was said to be an ape-like creature that walks upright and lives in the wilderness as we all know. Despite scientists insisting Bigfoot is not real, I, a qualified non-scientist, beg to differ. Over the years there have been more than a thousand sightings of Bigfoot as well as pictures, and I know they can't all be real but I do believe some of them are. In a 2014 poll done by the Associated Press, more Americans believe in Bigfoot than they do the Big Bang Theory, so there's that. I know I backed my statement with that stat, that's a scary stat first of all, but what do you guys think? Is Bigfoot real? He better damn well be. At number 4 is release the Kraken, and frankly that would have been the biggest missed opportunity if I didn't start with that, so I don't even care. And to be fully honest with you guys, I had never heard of a Kraken until I saw Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's chest and Davy Jones just brought out the Kraken. A Kraken is a gigantic cephalopod sea monster which in essence just translates to a giant squid. People have been insisting the Kraken is real for centuries. In the 18th century, a Norwegian bishop by the name of Erik Pontopidin said it was not a myth from any angle since Norwegian fishermen had seen it with their own eyes. Apparently when they row out miles into open water, the Kraken was usually at the bottom of the sea. There would be a bubbling in the water, then all the nearby fish would make a swim for it and panic, and then it would rise from the depths surrounded with seaweed. It was the scariest creature in the ocean and it was as big as 10 warships. And honestly, the fishermen who saw these things may not have been fully wrong. In real life, there is actually no animal as big as a kraken, but giant squids are 100% a thing. Those things can grow up to 600 pounds and be anywhere from 43 to 46 meters long. So we may not be dealing with a kraken, but we are dealing with Squidward's mother. Filling at number 3 slot is King Kong. Now the origin story of King Kong is the biggest plot twist ever, like I had no idea. Now before there was King Kong, there was the Komodo dragon. Rumours of enormous prehistoric lizard roaming the islands of Indonesia were rife in the 20th century. And you'd think people would have noticed an 8 foot long 100 pound reptile quite easily, but you'd be wrong. It took until 1910 when Dutch Lieutenant Stein van Hensbroek said enough it was enough and went on an expedition to Komodo Island himself. There he caught and killed a six foot specimen and brought it back to Java. But that wasn't good enough for American explorer W. Douglas Burden who went back there 15 years later because he wanted to bring two specimens back to America alive. That was a 
good show in and of itself, and he ended up killing a bunch of them, but he did manage to bring back two alive. When he got back, though, he told the whole story to Marion C. Cooper, who also happened to be a film producer. Substitute an ape for the Komodo dragon, and voila, you get the movie King Kong. So, I mean, really, King Kong was based off a completely real creature. It just wasn't an ape, it was a Komodo dragon. Now at number two are unicorns. These are real, you guys. They are. I don't care what you say. They're described as a majestic beast with a single spiraling horn coming out of its forehead. The people in the Indus Valley civilization mentioned it. The ancient Greeks mentioned it during accounts of natural history. It's present in European folklore in the Middle Ages, the Renaissance. Heck, the Bible even mentions an animal called the Riem, 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 which some versions translate it to unicorn. Now imagine living in whatever year BC without internet or anything and having to explain what a rhinoceros is to someone on the other side of the world that doesn't speak the same language as you. During the 5th century BC, a Greek physician called Theseus went to the royal court of Persia whose location brought together both sides of Eurasia, meaning everyone was just sharing information. He wrote about the Indian ass, a four-legged beast with a single horn that came with its own healing properties. And that Indian ass he was describing was a rhinoceros, but it translated to a unicorn. And I mean, really, rhinos are just really the thicker versions of unicorns anyway. Thick with two Cs maybe even three. And finally, at number one are mummies, and they're probably the realest thing on this list, and I mean by definition, it literally means a dead animal or human whose organs and skin have been preserved. In a lot of western fiction, they've always been depicted as dead people who reanimate as mummies. The whole curse of the mummy myth actually originated from 19th century European archaeologists, not the ancient Egyptians. We've excavated enough tombs over the years to confirm that mummies are real, and I mean there have been curses associated with some of these tombs. The biggest and deadliest one being that that was unleashed after we excavated King Tutankhamun. He took down so many people while dead, so I mean this myth checks out in every aspect other than the reanimation part, so I give it a thumbs up. And that's it for today's video guys. A lot of myths, a lot of truth, just a lot of everything right now. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!